there guys, it's one true griff and wow I am sucking at the commentary thing today. I know exactly what I want to say. I'll get to five or six minutes into it and I'll think, oh my god, I've already talked about this. I'm rambling and therefore I need to start again. And that has happened all day now. It does not help that I've got flu. I'm currently suffering with flu. I've got a chest infection at the same time, which is making me want to constantly cough. Which also does not help when you're trying to do a commentary. But I'm going to soldier through this one. I'm hoping that this will be the one. This is the one that's actually going to... Uh, it's going to get uploaded. I am going to talk today about challenges. And the usefulness of challenges. And the enjoyment of challenges, especially when it comes to gaming. Now, anyone who has played a single-player game in their time has set themselves a challenge, whether they've thought about it as a challenge or not. They've set themselves a challenge by selecting a difficulty. They've decided to try and complete the campaign on easy mode, on hard mode, on extreme mode. And when you complete the game, you, even if you've done it on easy mode, You've completed the, ch the challenge you set yourself of completing the campaign. Anything higher, and you've completed the game on normal, the difficulty that the developer meant for you to play on. On hard, the, g the mode the developer really made to tax you with. You've set yourself the target, and you've achieved it. That's when these games are enjoyable. When it comes to multiplayer, however, there is no... There's no way to tweak that. Everyone's on a level footing. Imagine how broken the game would be if some people went into matchmaking on easy mode and some people went on hard mode. I.e. some people had laser sights and, you know, auto aim. And people using hard mode had, you know, no thumbs. They had to, they had to remove their thumbs before they picked up the controller. You know, it just wouldn't be balanced. So, we have to try and set ourselves a challenge when we're going into a multiplayer game. And again, it's a little bit of a subconscious thing sometimes, but, you know, if you try and make it a little bit more active, that can make it that little bit more enjoyable. A lot of people you'll find when they're trying to put games on YouTube, or they're just trying to, you know, get the best game that they possibly can, they say, I'm going to get you know, 40 kills and five deaths and if I've done that then that's what's gonna be on YouTube and that's fine that's a, that's a, that's a very nice it, not necessarily easy challenge to have because it's still a challenge it's still difficult to get but the thing is you see a lot of them don't you, you see a lot of people who do that and fair play to them there are a lot of people out there who can play COD very very well they use different tactics to doing it. Some people, have, you know, they'll all have different kill streak setups. They, some of them will just sit in a corner for 15 minutes, get themselves that gameplay, and go, "Look how amazing I am!" And you know, they're looking at the same wall for the entire game. Doesn't matter. They've managed to. They've got beat the challenge that they set themselves. Now, in order to make Modern Warfare 3 more enjoyable for me, to set myself a challenge. Back, you know, back when we played Modern Warfare 2, lot, much, much easier game to get high kills, lower deaths. I think everyone across the board can agree with that. It was a lot easier to get high kills, low deaths than it was for Call of Duty 4. And it was a lot, lot easier than in this game. And considering this game is a lot, very, it's very, very similar to Modern Warfare 2. You know, the, we have to factor in the support kill streaks and how easy it is to shoot down all this air support. Now, with all that coupled in mind, I wanted something different. And one of the things that happened in the last couple of weeks was John and I set ourselves the challenge of using a certain gun and getting it to gold camo. Now, I set him the challenge of using the PKP Pechenegg, the, the worst 
light machine gun in the game. And it is the worst light machine gun in the game. I've tried it. It's horrible. But that's what made it a challenge. That's what he found most enjoyable, even though half the time he was just swearing at himself. It affects how you play. You have to change your playstyle for certain guns. And, for example, this gun that I'm using, this is the PM9. This is the one that he challenged me with. Using this gun, you have to be very... A lot, well, I'm not going to say very, 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 very bad grammar. Very, very... You have to be more mobile than you can be with an assault rifle. An assault rifle you can kill at a, lot, a greater range. Whereas with the submachine gun, as you've just seen from that shot there, that was really good timing in the commentary. You have to be quite close in order to actually kill a person, so you've got to be a lot more mobile. So it changes the gameplay massively. You have to think more about getting in behind them. You know, being getting uh, a flank behind them in order so that they're not going to be expecting it, so they've got their back to you. Now, when we set, he set me the challenge of using the gun, and I started using it, I realised how bad it was. I tried all these different attachments. I've got, I've got a silencer on it. I've got stability on it in terms of proficiency. I uh, class it up blind eye, hard line, steady aim, steady aim, because the aim down sight on this gun is just pointless. You, you, you couldn't hit a barn door. I was going to say something funny there, as in, oh, you, can, you couldn't hit a spaceship with another spaceship. But that'd be stupid because you'd be in space and it's got no relevance to COD whatsoever. But yes, the aim down sight on it's terrible, so by using steady aim, it makes it just that little bit easier to use. Now, when I started using this setup, one of the things that I found was, even with every setup as it is, it was very, very difficult to kill people. I was just getting assists, even without using a recon drone. I would end up with eight, nine, maybe ten assists per game, which is way higher than you probably expect. You know, in a, in a game where the kill times are so fast. But it happened. It was very, very annoying, but even so, when it was, even when it was annoying, at the end of the game, I was looking at it and I was laughing. Because you just go, you look at the scoreboard and you just go, oh my god. How many assists? And that got me thinking of trying to get as many assists as possible. So I've now set myself the challenge up for these videos that are now going to go up on the channel. From me anyway. I don't know what the other two will do about their... Um, nuzzling playthrough of the Digimon Pokey World thing. I don't know what they're doing in terms of Call of Duty for there, but for me, if I'm going to put some Call of Duty up, this is what I'm going to do. We're going to try and get 30 assists or more per game, and then it's going to, and that's what's going to be put up on the channel. Now, I ended up with about three or four games from last night where I got 30 assists. But they've not actually all been captured. I'm still having problems with my computer. I'm getting frame drops. And the problem is, every time that I get a frame drop on my computer, it decides it doesn't want to actually store the gameplay, even with the frame drop. So, it lose, I lose the gameplay. So, out of the 3-4 gameplays that I've got of 30 plus assists, this is the only one that I've got, so I've got to keep playing. I'm hopefully going to up it as I get more and more used to the setup. Maybe if I end up using a different gun, I might end up using the P90 more than this um, once I've got it to gold camo. See whether that will improve it. It might end up meaning that I kill more people, which is you know, it will maybe get me more recon drones. But it might not actually get, end up getting me more assists. I have to see, I'll have to see exactly what happens. If I can get it up to 40 assists per game, I will definitely, definitely do that. This gameplay is now winding up. I watched it back a few times before I did the recording. I do find it a lot more enjoyable watching someone running around, trying to capture points, not just sitting in the corner and trying to do this, trying to be the team player, get the game won, get the objective done. And it was very aggressive, and I thought it was a lot more enjoyable 
especially from my point of view. Anyway, that's the gameplay. I'll try and get more up as they come along and they get recorded. I'm One True Griff. I'll see you all later. Bye.